Biafra. This is Biafra Liberation Army Network coming to you again. Please do subscribe, like, share, and comment. Public. To the Enam the Canos legal team, Biafra is saying, worry no more. You've done your best possible in the Zoo Republic. My fellow Biafra, as we speak today, I am going to show you what the legal team is saying. The man they chose to hold, the man they chose to kidnap Enambe Kano, all because he was speaking for the liberation of his people with his mouth, with his tongue. They went all the way to Kenya to kidnap him. Today you will see what Iswab, Boko Haram, the Fulani killer headsmen are doing in Nigeria during the time of their, you know, breaking their fasts. The Muslims celebration, the Eid Fifitri, or what they call it. You will see the Muslims, the Fulani headsmen, Boko Haram, Iswab, and the rest of them. They are also observing their own. And no policeman is there to catch them. No policeman is there to catch them. No army, no DSS is there to catch them. They are in a big field in Zamfara State. Doing their prayers. Breaking their fast. And celebrating the ideal fetri. It beats my imagination. That can only happen in a zoo republic where elephants can fly. So if you are with me, let us listen to the key words or statements made by Enam the Kano's legal team. Two or three of them. And afterwards, I will show you what the other people are doing. The kidnappers, the Boko Haram, the Iswap, and the rest of them. I will show you how they are having a field time, a feel good time. They are in the spirit praying to their God. Without the DSS, the army, the police coming close to arrest them. They are in an open field praying with their AK-47 by their side and nobody is there to drop a bomb or to arrest them. That shows you the kind of country you are in. If you are with me, let us go there. Listen. He never, be, he never obeyed God's order, orders. And we will not take it from him that because of his mentality, because of his military background, now that we have a Democrat, I'm talking about uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is a Democrat. I work with him as a student during Nadeku. Okay. When my uncle, Professor was, Edward Oproji, was there. And we worked together. So we felt that as a Democrat he is, he's supposed to reveal all the atrocities that has been committed by, uh, by, by President uh, Mohammed uh, Mohammed Buhari. Then, now, instead of him going by his renewed hope agenda to reveal all this, okay. I said, no, when you are calling an organization that is not a terrorist organization, a terrorist organization in your country, okay. you are destroying the country. And that was the, one of the worst um, 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 uh, acts and decisions um, uh, taken by Buhari and the uh, Attorney General of the Federation, Malami. The worst SAN I have ever seen in, in, in the whole world. Now, that you don't declare somebody, a, an organization in your own country, a terrorist organization, you are now implicitly telling people that you are, you, are, you, you are a terrorist country. And the people should not come to invest. Hold Nobody it there first. Hold it there first. You just made a very good point, my barrister. You said when you were a student, you worked with Tinubu during the Nadeko time. Unfortunately, I'm here to say this, that as sad as it may sound, looking at the way Tinubu is operating now, I can confidently say the great Chief MKO Abiola 
died in vain. He died in vain because if he had known the kind of criminals he was dealing with, if he had known the chameleons around him in Nadeko telling him to fight the military junta, he never knew they had their own selfish interest. They left him there to die. They left him to dry out while the rest of them, they are the ones now gaining. If Tinubu was a so-called member of Nadeko, those who were fighting for what? Democracy and the rule of law. Suddenly, in the time of Tinubu, is when this is happening in that Zoo Republic. The highest level of tribalism I have seen in my life is happening in the time of Tinubu. That tells me Chief M. Abiola died in vain because if he had known he was dealing with criminals all around him, he would have washed his hands off. He would have known that fight wasn't a good fight. Because what is the purpose? Right now you have somebody who was the one of the so-called pioneers of Nadeko as your president in that zoo. Is he standing on the shoulders of Chief MK Abiola? No, because look at what he's doing in power. With all due respect, I love my brother, Chief Sunday Igboho. With all due respect, I respect Showare. But can you all see the game this man is playing? The highest level of tribalism. Which shows that we are not one people. It shows we are not one nation. Because he came into power and suddenly he has released his own people from power. But Namdekano is still being held. This man has just said that he worked with Tinubu during the time of Nadeko. I hope your eyes is now clear, Mr. Barrister. I hope you will now know the person you are dealing with. Because they are all there for their selfish interests. You guys should know that. Do not assume that everybody fighting with you is your friend. Most of them, they are there for selfish interest. They are there for selfish interest. For the clearing an organization, a uh, uh, um, uh, terror, uh, terrorist organization have been provided. You did not declare um, um, uh, uh, Mieti Allah, you were a herdsman, you did not declare them terrorists. See, you now an IPOB that you know that never carried arms. IPOB that know that they are following everything procedurally, you now declared. So it is not late. We are, people have been uh, uh, asking, what is the president doing? Mr. Uh, president, uh, of course, uh, I never believed in your administration based on your antecedent in Lagos as a governor. That's why I work against you. I voted against you. If opportunity for that it, it is office, I will still work against you. But now, it is, you still have an opportunity to amend your, your ways. Look at all those decisions. President Buari took in respect of this uh, Nandekalos matter and IBUB matter. Look at a way you can apply political solution. Of course, if all those things that gave rise to this particular agitation is being addressed, I don't think that there will be need for agitation. But My brother, hold on there. You see, this thing you are saying, I, I get you. I get your point. But I need you to understand that Stilubu is not the one in power. I'll be a liar to you if I tell you that Tintinubu has the power to release Mazen Namdekano. Because he's not the one at the helm of affairs. Those who are the rulers of Nigeria were the ones that sent the military to Okwoma. And just yesterday now, the, mil the military in Okwama, they are having their own hearing. They want to call the two communities to come and sit down and discuss what happened. The military, not the governor, not an independent party, not an independent institution coming to investigate to know what happened in Okwama. 
People from Okwama, they are still in the bush and the military they are saying they want to call a round table to discuss. Yesterday, it was only the other villagers that had people there. Nobody from Okoma came because there is no need discussing with those who are doing the killing and who want to be the ones to carry out, you know, their so-called legislation or whatever over the case. This is the problem we have in that zoo. So if you assume that Stinobu is the one holding Enam the canoe, then you might be making a very big mistake. Because Tinubu is not the one ruling Nigeria. I can beat my chest and tell you that. It is the Fulani Cabal. Because I don't see why he's taking the fight of Buhari. If it was him that was holding Namdekano, he would have washed his hands since. Because Justice Bintanyaku is doing exactly the same thing she did when Buhari was there. You said it here. You called for what? A bail. And she said no. Despite the Supreme Court has said that on, they were wrong in cancelling the bail of Onam the Kano. The High Court was wrong in revoking the bail of Onam the Kano because Onam the Kano ran away for his life. They came to kill him. In the process, 28 people died in his house. He even lost his father and mother. You know? So the Supreme Court scolded the High Court for revoking his bail. But despite that, you and I know that Justice or whatever her name is, Binta Yaku, she refused to even hear what the Supreme Court said. She said she would not give him bail because even the Kujie prison, she said it was not safe to keep Namdekano there. Think about that.